Hello, welcome. This is Diane Cunningham Ellis. Super excited to be here today on a Inspired Women. I used to call it, um, way back I was doing blog talk radio and it was called Inspired Women Radio. And I started doing that in 2008. Why? Because it was free. I was like, why, is, why are people not doing this? You know, it's free and I can promote myself. Hello, hello. Uh, and so here we are on Zoom. I mean, you pay a tiny, tiny fee for Zoom. You can even do it on your free Zoom, people. Interview somebody, invite people into your world so they can all get to know each other. It's like mix, match, and mingle. Um, obviously, I'm caffeinated. I'm excited. Um, this woman lives just kind of down the street from me, and we have not met in person. I know, bad on us, but um, she's busy doing these things. And, um, you know, I'm over here sitting in front of Zoom all day. So we will meet. <laughs> um, I'm going to show you all the cool things she has. Um, I'm going to pull up some screens here and show you that. Well, let me, let me do that now. And then we'll start with prayer. Uh, let me do a shared screen and, uh, let me go here. This is Tracy's. Can you see her new website? Just nod and smile. Okay. Tracy didn't, when I first talked to Tracy, I'm like, where's your website? She's like, I don't have one. I'm like, huh? What? <laughs> and so now she has this beautiful website. It just popped out. You know, I mean, these are things that we work on behind the scenes. She has a member vault. A lot of you in the room have member vault. So you're going to be very familiar with that. Um, so let me go click. So here's her member vault. Of course, I have access to it because I am a member. I am a member. Excuse me. I'm going to click in here. So uh, foundations, fuel, training, mindset, all the cool things. Uh, and then the brand new website that you're going to get to hear about because I'm going to ask her all the things so that you can hear about it. And then her brand new, like one week, about one week old, one week and about 10 days old, I believe. Um, and I'm not a stalker, Tracy, I promise. Um, here's her new app. Here's her new app. And so you can see it here on the phone, but obviously I got out of my own way and like it was, I learned how to put it on my phone last night and I was like, oh my gosh, I've got to be able to figure this out because I don't want to be a ding dong, right? So I did figure it out and this is um, exciting. So Tracy, uh, well, <laughs> Tracy is a certified personal trainer, nutrition coach who specializes in helping women reshape their bodies without killing themselves with cardio and depriving, depriving themselves of food. So Tracy, tell them a little bit more about who you are. Um, not just that, but I know you have kids, you know, a little bit. Okay. So I am, I turned 50 this year and I'm a mother of three. I have a 26 year old that I'd like to say I had at a normal age. And then I have an 11 year old and a nine year old. Well, actually he'll be 12 soon. And I have a grandbaby. So I'm a a grandmother to a two-year-old. Um, my background, my educational background is actually in social work. And then I got my teaching certificate. My whole life I've been in fitness. So I've probably been in fitness a good 30 years. And so I've kind of throughout everything I've done, I've either been um, an aerobics instructor. I trained some high school girls and a personal trainer. So I kind of went back and forth between teaching and um, training. So this last year, um, last, I guess, two years it's been, I got back into nutrition and training and, and um, recertified and started out as an in-person trainer. And then COVID hit and that changed everything. And so I hired a business coach, which was the first time I had ever invested in my, my business or really myself, honestly. And um, it's just kind of morphed from there. So I guess a year ago, I hired the coach and she taught me how to go online. And her main thing was high ticket sales, which I love, but I realized that with a lot of the discovery calls I was doing, there was a lot of women that I wasn't serving. And so mm -hmm. as I'm sure you guys know, as you do a business, you're cons consistently changing it and modifying it and, and learning as you go. So that's kind of what I've done is just kind of learned as I've gone and went from having a high ticket, a medium ticket and a low ticket so that I can kind of serve 
more people. Um, and so that's kind of where I am now. Okay, good. Um, and these, some of these get, well, everybody in the room is part of some of my business. You know, I'm a business coach and these all, these gals all get it. They're all in business. Let me go to one of my favorite things from you. Okay. okay. Like, you know, and again, I'm not, I'm not a stalker, <laughs> um, but like, we all have so much to learn. This is why we're talking about this. We're talking about this related to the fitness, the food, but we were talking about this as entrepreneur women. We're talking about this as when I first saw these, I was like, oh, that's brilliant. How can I, here's what I'm always thinking. I'm always looking at the person's life, business, et cetera, because I'm like, oh, I kind of need that probably, you know, not everything, but, oh, that's interesting to me. And then, oh, what is she doing that maybe I could morph into being work for my peeps? How, how could that work for my people? Cause we're in different peoples, you know, she has different peoples, but this is one of the forms and I'm not going to be able to find the other one, but this form right here is beautiful. And there's another one that's kind of a chart too, that it's like, gosh, that makes it so simple that, you know, what, what Tracy just talked about the 12 week coaching program is the high ticket. The blueprints is the kind of medium in I, my coach I'm working with now work. We call this the Ascension model. So like where, you know, the $25 thing, you know, leads to the $150 thing. And that's as far as some people are ever going to go with you. And some people won't even do the 25. Like, let's just tell you, you know, let's talk truthfully. Um, but we also want to bring them, you know, up the, up the path. So for those that want the 5,000, the 2,000, you know, whatever that high price thing is, we have to, you know, we can't create, you know, you're not going to bust all this out overnight, just so you know, like this is a big, long thing. And, um, you know, you heard, I mean, of course, Tracy had to pivot like we all did when COVID hit. Um, so let me, I'm going to like, actually look at my questions and maybe, um, you know, focus for just a split second, but, um, Tracy, you come from, you've struggled with food, with body image, with eating disorders. Tell us a little bit about that before we switch back into business. Yes. So when I was in high school, um, that's when I had my eating disorder, my senior year in high school, it was one of those things where it was literally like, I can remember, um, I was a perfectionist, I had good grades, um, but I was always seeking get better, get better, get better, and really seeking outside things to make me feel good about myself. So the one thing that I felt like I needed to improve on was my body. So I decided it was literally the January of my junior year and I decided going on a diet. So that turned into basically to where I pretty much ate 800 calories a day. And every day it became how much less can I eat? You know, I had to hit that 800 or less. And then from there, um, I was like, okay, I'm where I want to be. So I was anorexic. And then as I started eating again, I lost control. And that was a terrible feeling. So I learned how to throw up. So then I became bulimic. My parents pretty much figured it out my senior year and they gave me an ultimatum of uh, you either get this, we go in the hospital, we get counseling, whatever we need to do, but we're not going to send you to college until you get this taken care of. And of course, back then when I was in high school, it was like nobody went to junior college and I was devastated that I would have to say, I'm not going to a four year college. So um, I went into um, six weeks of inpatient um, and finally realized, oh, I do have a problem because I still didn't think that. I thought I'll go into this, I'll figure it out, I'll figure out how to manipulate the system and I'll get out and I'll go back to doing what I want to do. It was a great program. And um, from there, I was no longer doing any of those behaviors. Like I wasn't throwing up, I wasn't starving myself, but I would say, from that period on, I really didn't have a good relationship with food. And so it's been a lifelong struggle for me, whether it be um, exercising too much or feeling guilty or obsessing about, I can't have this, I can't have that. And then I would say probably in the last two years when I kind of okay. conquered it was when I finally decided, okay, I need to figure out 
how to switch my focus from being skinny to being strong. And so mm -hmm. when, I, when I finally made that switch of like, I just want to be a strong woman and I want to be a strong female. And I don't want to, I mean, as dumb as this sounds, there was part of me that was like, I don't want to be the person who at, you know, 40 years old can't lift her own suitcase. And so um, when I made that switch, I started looking at food as fuel. And I started thinking, what will this do to my body and how will this make me feel as opposed to, is this gonna make me fat or skinny? And so I totally changed my mindset from like eating non-fat foods that had a ton of chemicals in it to, all right, I'm going completely non-processed. I'm gonna get my proteins, my carbs and my fats. And that's really, and it, it, it didn't happen overnight, but that's how I had to do it. I had to switch to thinking, how can I get stronger? And mm. it changed everything. So there, like, there were times in my life I wouldn't eat cheese. There were times in my life I wouldn't eat carbs. And I can tell you that like, I can eat a cookie and be done. Whereas I used to, I couldn't do that. I would eat one and I would think about it and I'd eat two and I'd think about it or I wouldn't have any at all. So that was my way of releasing myself from the food issues is focusing more on strength. And so that's, like Diane said, that's part of the program is the mindset part because I can tell women how to work out. I can tell women what they should eat, but if you can't switch that mindset, it's just another program where it's not going to last and it's not, you know, so the mindset is a huge part of it. Mm -hmm. so that's kind of how Yeah. It yeah. Yeah. So, and, we, and Tracy and I've had this conversation privately too. And, and you know, we were walking the same path, you know, I'm going to be 50 next summer. Uh, my eating disorder, you know, it's like I started dieting when I was 15 or 16, I, you know, have 30 years of calendars writing down my weight, you know, um, and I started starving myself that senior year as well. And long, you know, I was 30 pounds smaller than I am now, which I just think, how are you even alive? Right. <laughs> I lost my period. Uh, and then it's like, there's a, there's a moment where you, you are, you just, the flip, it flips and you just, I started binging and I, I know secret binging and then gaining and then, you know, and I, I always, this is horrible to say, I always wished I could be a, a purger and I couldn't purge. And so that, you know, God saved me. Thank you. Um, but I then went all the way to 50 pounds more than I weigh now. So I went from, you know, it, it's like, wow. Uh, neither one was right. Neither, you know, it's all the same, whether we're big or tiny, it's all here and it can kill us. It's killing us, it's killing us. Um, and so we definitely relate to each other on that. And then, you know, even, so even this morning, you're gonna love this and, and I, I'm still learning, growing. And, you know, this is why I reached out to Tracy, because I said, I need to learn how to think of food as fuel. I desperately want that. I don't want food to be the enemy. Um, you know, even today I wrote down at the top of my planner, stop dieting. Like really? Yes. Stop trying. I'm trying to stop diet dieting. And which is why, you know, I'm, I'm attracted to her and her, uh, you know, the, what she's teaching about, you know, carbs are not the enemy. Um, your hunger, you know, when you haven't listened to your hunger for 30 years, it's hard to even know what it is. Are you hungry? Is that just, what is that? I mean, and then knowing when you're hungry, when you're full and knowing when to eat, like how much to eat. And I still think that I'm eating actually too, too, not enough. And, and I keep, it goes against everything I've been trying to do for 30 years. Like, I need to eat more. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I'm scared of that. I'm so scared of that. Um, anyway, we, we could go off on a tangent. So, um, you know what? it's interesting you say that because here's what I always bring it back to, to business women is you have to trust the process, just like you trusted the process to be an entrepreneur and you, you, you were able to, to do that, but you had to follow steps and you had to trust somebody at some point that A plus B plus C is going to get you there. And it's the same thing with food. You know, I'm reverse of you where for my business, I'm constantly questioning myself. Like I don't question myself with food or fitness, but I question myself with business. So I have to tell myself, 
trust the process. Just like I tell my clients when it comes to food and stuff, I have to trust the process when it comes to business and know that if I do these certain things, I'm going to get there. So it's kind of like you can take whatever you've been successful at. You almost have to take what you're working on and say, I did it with this. I can do it with that. And I have to Mm -hmm. use the same principles from this to do to the principle of the new goal that I'm setting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And like you said, and and Tracy has a free group and we'll post the link for that again, a couple more times and, and you're going to want to get in there. It's really good. I mean, she, she does a lot of what we do in Brave Women Nation. You know, I'm always asking you guys stuff and we're, I'm answering your questions and, and, you know, she's one of us, you know, we're all like doing brave stuff. It just looks different on each of us. Like, I mean, I'm scared to death of doing, I, I, I do Facebook lives all day and whatever, who cares? Um, and some of you are scared to death of that. You know, some of you are scared to death of whatever, you know, I mean, each of us, it's like, oh, she's so brave. Well, I'm scared over here in a different section. It, <laughs> It doesn't mean I'm, you know, I'm like Miss Bravo girl everywhere I go. I created the group called Brave Women Nation for a reason, because I have fear. I have fear. And I've had to learn day after day, just like my recovery from alcoholism, just for today, what can I do for my business? Just for today, you know, not next Friday, not 15 days from now, you know, I have to show up and, and I am doing that too for food you know, what can I commit to just for today, whether that's removing a thing, um, which I've had to do, you know, I've removed a lot of foods. I've removed things that cause me trouble because, you know, if I know I can't, if I, I, I know, like I cannot eat a little bit of certain things because I want all of the, you know, I want the basket. I want the bucket of blank. (laughs) Mm -hmm. And so it's easier for me to just say, I don't eat the blank because I, there's not enough blank in the world for me because it just triggers this kind of endless, um, I don't know it it triggers my addiction stuff. Okay. So let's talk about, let me just, uh, let's just check in here. Um, so a day in the life of Tracy, let's, you know, I mean, are you up at three in the morning exercising? (laughs) All right. So I know you, you know, I, I, well, I think I know what you do, but tell us a regular, like, I don't know, during the week day, what what goes on? So typically I get up at five. Um, I'm definitely a morning person. I like to have my coffee. I drink this before I do anything. Um, I get my coffee and then I have some downtime um, before I get up the kids. So then I know this is really weird, but I, like I said, food is fuel for me. I make my oatmeal. I eat my oatmeal while I'm sitting in front of uh, the, my makeup mirror getting ready in the morning. Um, and then it's waking the kids up as I'm fixing their lunches. Then I'm eating my eggs and then I get them off to school. And then typically um, I go in to get fit, which is the personal training gym I work at. I train some clients. I've I've scheduled my day to where I have morning clients and afternoon clients, because if I put them all together, I don't feel like I'm my best because as you can imagine, as a personal trainer, you are, you, you hear stuff, you know, you're there for your clients. And it's after like a couple of sessions, I'm, I'm emotionally drained. So Mm -hmm. I typically go work out, come home, eat and go back to the gym And usually when I'm eating, I'm on my computer answering emails or checking back into Facebook or getting stuff done. And then I'm back to the gym training and then I get pick up the kids and then it's kid time. And to to be honest, I try to be kid time. I'm not always good at that. (laughs) And so um, how many clients, and some of this is just my personal question for you. Yeah. Like how many clients do you see in a day? Is it an hour? Is it half an hour? And do these people come once a week, every other week? What's that look like? Most people come twice a week. And okay. I, sometimes I have people by themselves and sometimes I have groups. So on any given hour, I could have two people. I could have three people. I could have one person. So you know, it could be just one-on-one with somebody or it could be one and three, you know, and, and there's positives to both because one-on-one, I'm, 
they have my undivided attention. One, but then I'm carrying the load. And right. then one on three can be good, but you got to make sure everybody feels like they're being taken care of. Right, so. right, right. Um, and then, so you take your, uh, well, and I've already asked Tracy, so this will be coming soon. Um, she's always asking in her group, you know, what do we, what do we have questions about? So I love watching those, what I eat in a day videos. I don't know if anybody yes. else watches those, but like to hear that you eat oatmeal and eggs in the morning, I'm sure that's not all you eat either. Oh, no. <laughs> No, but I mean, I, you know, it's funny because it's one of those things where I have people say, I couldn't eat that. And I'm like, okay, could you not eat it or you don't want to? And, and so it's a constant weighing of, and like, I have literally eaten that same breakfast for probably five years, mm -hmm. but it's what I do. So it's kind of one of those things where it's like, I know that if I eat that oatmeal, with a scoop of peanut butter or almond butter and my eggs with egg whites, I know I'm getting the perfect amount of carbs, proteins, and fat for my morning. So mm -hmm. it's literally like, it's literally been what I do. And then usually I have maybe um, a protein bar while I'm training clients. And it's usually like those raw rev bars that are completely, um, you know, they're whole foods. Then after I work out, I have a protein drink that I make myself, which is um, frozen spinach, frozen bananas, collagen powder, greens powder, and protein powder. And then I have a, um, a full lunch, which is usually some kind of lean protein with some kind of healthy carb and vegetables. And then I typically have another bar or yogurt or something. And then I have dinner, which again is a lean protein, uh, co a complex carb and vegetables. And then nine times out of 10, I have a snack before bed. So I oh, eat about okay, well, calories. Oh my gosh. Okay, well that scares the crap out of me and excites me at the same time. And um, so, I mean, these are the things that are so interesting. Is there some sort of bell going off in the background at your it, house? You know what, it is my, I haven't figured like I want to it's my kids stuff and it's one okay. of the where I like I need to be able to know what they're doing but then I never know how to turn it off because <laughs> believe it or not with somebody who has done like the amount of uh the amount of work that I have done on a computer <laughs> I don't even know how to turn that off <laughs> okay okay I mean well, I have an app I have a website that I did myself, but as far as technology of like, yeah, sorry about that. <laughs> oh my gosh, this, uh, I love it. Uh, well, maybe we'll figure it out. Um, I know. Um, or maybe it's, uh, maybe it stops after a while. Um, yeah. <clears throat> okay, so and definitely ladies, post your questions in, in the chat. I do have a couple that um, have been sent in that I'm gonna pull up here in a second, but I think it's really, it's really powerful to get a snapshot into another type of like she's a you know you're a very different type of entrepreneur still entrepreneur like the woman has to pay her bills the woman you know is a single parent uh she has three children she has bills to pay and she has clients in the morning takes a break clients in the afternoon and then online clients virtual clients and with this power of the new app that she has for $25 a month, which I just subscribed to yesterday. Um, you know, I, I can have Tracy, you know, and, and, and inside of all of her stuff, you get the free down, you know, not free, but you get like the snack page. Um, actually, let me just grab a couple of the pages so I can like, I love, um, you know, like she has all these cool eight mistakes women are making with their diets. And, you know, I like to kill a lot of trees over here. Meal prep, the meal prep package. Um, you know, she just sent out a PDF of snack ideas. So like, there's a whole lot that I've been able to access. Um, and some, you know, not all of the things I have are in the app because I was in a, I'm in a different level program, but there's still a lot, a lot, a lot in the app and a lot of recipes. And then she shares just a lot in that, you know, that Facebook group. And, you know, for me, it's like, I need to look at, like, I need to hold stuff. I need to hold it. I need to look at it, especially, 
you know, I keep some of this stuff in my kitchen. The one that I have in my kitchen constantly that I'm trying to remember, and I'm trying to be like you, honey. <laughs> is um and we'll do a private session here soon uh this list of um you know that basically tracy's exact saying exactly what she's you know choose a protein this one choose a protein and then number two choose a complex carb you know this is not rocket science but for some reason it just um we get so confused we get so confused about you know eat, uh, intermittent fasting and keto and you know, Noom and Weight Watch. I mean, it's like I could list a hundred programs I've paid for. Some of them are free. And every single night it's like, oh, okay, I'm going to go to the diet, the food and diet channel on Pinterest and look up, you know, the oatmeal diet. There's such a thing. The potato diet. I, I bought two books about the potato diet where you just eat potatoes. <laughs> anyway, you got to laugh at your insanity. This morning I was like, you know, now, right now I'm off of fruit for like 10 days off of fruit because somebody's like well fruit's really bad i'm like i love fruit i and then i this morning i was like Diane, no one ever got fat eating cantaloupe you know what i'm saying no one is going to get fat eating a honey crisp apple right um <laughs> okay tracy um any anything you want to add to that before i go well, on a tangent you know, i think no it's a it's a great point and i think what it is like Let's be honest, everybody wants the quick fix. Everybody wants that secret and there's no secret. Like every single diet out there, the reason they work is because they restrict your calories and they make you cognizant of what you're putting in your mouth. So, you know, people ask me all the time, what do you think about this diet? What do you think about that diet? And there's some diets that I'm like, absolutely not. Um, one of them being keto because like in like, there's never, I, it just doesn't make sense to me that you can't, you can have all these kind of things, but you can have bacon, you can have all these terrible fats for you, but you can't have a banana. And I'm like, like no, any diet that keeps you from any food group, like whether it's no carb, no protein, no fat, any of those diets are just run from. Um, and any diet you can't do for the rest of your life, run right. from. Um, so you have to look and say, okay, is it sustainable? Cause if it's not sustainable, then don't do it. Um, and then second, does it make sense? Is it healthy? You know? Um, and so for example, people ask me all the time, what do you think about intermittent fasting? And I'm like, I don't think anything about that good or bad. It's a tool. And what it does, because, because you will find scientists like true blue experts that will say, you know, if you do intermittent fasting, it's great for your metabolism. But then you will find scientists that say, if you eat small meals all day, it's great for your metabolism. Mm -hmm. So which one is it? Well, what intermittent fasting does is it keeps you in this period. So guess how many calories you can eat? It still goes to calorie deficit, still does. So that's really what, and keto too, because you're cutting out all these things you can't have, it's calorie deficit. Everything mm -hmm. goes every diet goes to calorie deficit no fruit okay well then think about that you you've set your mind to i'm going to be healthy so even as you're not eating fruit you're probably not eating pizza either because it's kind of like well if i'm going to give up fruit well then i'm not going to blow it with pizza you know <laughs> so all those diets out there make you more cognizant about what you're putting in your mouth right 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 well, and, and calorie, you know, calorie, de calorie density and, you know, fullness and, and yes. some, some people are like, we are volume people. It's like, I want, I mean, I know how to make an awesome, huge plate that's like low cal and yes. I've perfected a science of that with, you know, and, you know, I got off sugar and a bunch of other stuff a couple of years ago, but like I was doing intermittent fasting and restricting calories and like starving to death. You know, yes. I mean, starving to death. Okay. Um, so I want to, let me see here. Let me look at the questions that will tell us about what, what did you have? I mean, I know you hired your first business coach about a year, you know, a little over a year ago and, you know, you've had to do things you've never done before, right? Yes. Number of all is a learning curve. A lot of us in the room wave, if you're using member vault and help me, you know, a lot of us use member vault and. Yeah. are using that so you had to basically kind of rise up from Colleyville 
and go, okay, well, how can I reach more people even, you know, down the road, but they aren't, you know, nobody's coming to the gym. So what did that, um, how did, what did you learn from that experience? And now looking back, aren't you so glad? I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm very glad. Like I, I, like whenever I talk about 2020, I refuse to say it was a bad year because it was a good year for me. Um, and it was just one of those things that it was like sink or swim, you know, like you have a choice and I chose to, to swim and, you know, it made me grow just as a person mm-hmm. in general to just realize like, like I didn't just give up, you mm-hmm. know? And so, um, and it also taught me that I can do hard things because, you know, there were, there was a while where I stayed home with the kids and I didn't work. And so I think when I, I, I would not give that time up, but during that time, it's almost like you don't feel like I didn't feel like I was smart anymore. Like I didn't feel capable anymore. So being able to get online, learn member vault, learn all these things made me go, I, I, I can, I still am, I still have a brain, you know, and I can still accomplish something. So that's kind of like, for me was like everything about 2020 is just like growing as a person. Mm -hmm. And so, and so you recently, um, so, so Tracy was debuting this app and I'm like, tell, you know, I'm always like, tell me all the things, you know? And um, so she's, she, she found there's a uh, company called good or a website good barber i've never Mm -hmm. heard of it until tracy told me this is the cool things we learn from one another um i mean i could learn a a hundred things from tracy if i sat with her all day you know followed her around hundred things about all you know and she could learn the same from me so goodbarber.com you can create your own app marta i've already shown it to marta marta is one of the ones that helps me with my wordpress website and my number vault Mm -hmm. and i was like look at this And, um, and so, uh, she created this app and kind of learned how to do it and then did it herself. And so tell us more about why, I mean, how many people have signed up already? What are you excited about? Okay. So, and, and let me back up. So I hired the one coach and then when I finished with her, I actually moved on to another group. Um, and not, and, and I'm super glad I did the one coach, but then like I said, it's kind of like once you invest once in your company or your business, then it's like you're constantly looking for more. So from there is where I found the coach. So I did that program and then I found the one-on-one coach that helped me with Good Barber. Mm -hmm. Um, And so what I kind of had going is I had the, so the blueprints that you have, that was part of my 12 week, but what the 12 week was accountability and one-on-one calls and individualization then was the blueprints, but then people that finished the 12 week program stayed on an app. It was not my app, but it was an app for trainers where I create the workouts, but it's still their platform. Um, So then I would have people that like, I would have discovery calls and the the $1,500 for the 12 week program was not in their budget. So then I started offering them just to be on True Coach, which is the personal training Mm -hmm. platform that was not mine. And from there, I was kind of like, I like it, but I need, I want everything in one spot and I want it to be mine. And so that's when I decided, and I knew the one coach, her name is Jamie. I knew she had done her own app and was successful. So I hired her. And so she did the backbone of it. And then throughout the whole process, I made sure that I knew how to do it myself as well. Cause I don't, you know, I need to be able to create it myself and to be honest with you, my personality is if there's going to be a mistake on the app, it needs to be mine. So, <laughs> I don't want to blame anybody else. Right, right, right. Well, there's so, so much to, and everybody here is working on this too. It's like, we need to have, we need to have entry level places. People can come in in different places and, you know, spots for them to come in and kind of like, you know, it's like dating. You got to date. Don't want to jump straight in bed. Nobody's going to, you know, that we don't do that. We're too old for that nonsense. You know, we've got to give them a way to um, see how we are, get to know our vibe, you know, see if they, if, if, you know, and they might not be the right ones for us. We might, we, we might like not be right. 
but like, I love what Tracy's done with learning, you know, moving and everybody in this room, you know, we all have these coaches and programs and systems and, and, you know, I'm always, I'm, I meet with my coach right after this, my two, my new coaching group. Um, and I've told these women, like how much I've spent since November, I've spent $16,000 on coaching programs yeah. since November, learning how to use Voxer, learning how to, you know, I mean, make many workshops and, you know, learning all these things. Um, because if I don't invest in me, why would you want to invest in me? Yeah. Amen. Um, and so I love, love, love just this kind of, you know, stair step level. And, you know, you're going to be able to reach so many people in the 25, you know, 25 a month level subscription membership, so to speak. And then, you know, maybe they're going to want the next level, or maybe they'll want a one-time, a one-time workshop with you. Yeah. yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Kind of how it is. It's almost like my 12 week people can go to the 25, you know, that's a feeder, but then the 25 can feed to the 12, or like you said, it may feed into people that see me in person. So it's all, you know, it, it's almost like, and I couldn't have done that all at once. Like I could mm -hmm. not have done it all at once. I mean, as you know, it was a long process and, and it, if, if I could encourage anybody, which I am not a, I'm not a business coach, but what I learned the most was, is to just, like you said, every day, get something done. And then it'll come to you of, oh, well, this would be great. And then go with it and see what you can do with it. And because mm -hmm. I don't, like if you had asked me a year ago when I was making a, uh, my big prop, my big 12 week thing, I would have said that, no, I don't want an app. Why would I want to <laughs> not doing that? You know? So, but it just naturally led into it. So it's kind of like, just keep your mind open as far as where you might go with something. I don't know where I'm going to be in a year, but I know exactly, exactly. Here, you know, exactly. Really cool. exactly. Yeah. I keep a quote on my wall and I tell my clients this all the time. Your clients want the evolution of you. You're mm -hmm. a totally different woman. We all are from, yeah. you know, February last year before COVID happened. Yes. And some of us, some people got frozen and just ate sourdough bread for two months. And the rest of us were just like, come on, keep on, yeah. let's go. Right. Um, and so, uh, let's see. Oh, well, first I wanted to, Robin, like show, Robin's shirt is so funny with what we were just, Robin has a shirt on that says she is strong. Let us see your shirt. It says she is right. strong. I'm right. like looking at that going, okay, like God is funny. God is funny. So one question that Christy had asked, um, sorry, I, I would, I used your name, Christy, but I'm going to ask, I would ask the same thing myself. So I'll I just pretend it's my question. Sorry. Um, you know, can we break our metabolism? Like, how do we, like, what does that even mean? Um, if I don't eat, you know, if I've done all these diets, is my metabolism screwed up? I love that question. Love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. So here's the deal. You cannot break your metabolism. You can, you can make it go down and you can make it go up. So here's what happens. So if you think about a restrictive diet and you lose a bunch of weight, you're not only losing body fat, you're losing muscle. Okay. So if you don't exercise at all, or you over exercise, so you're over exercising, which is still calorie deficit, or you're not taking enough food, calorie deficit, you lose weight but you lose muscle. Muscle is the key to metabolism. Okay. So if you lose weight, that's what happens on crash diets is you lose all this weight, you lose muscle. As you lose muscle, your metabolism goes down because meta building muscle is the only natural way to increase your metabolism, the only natural way. And so that's, so you can change your metabolism by increasing your muscle and fueling your body. So you have to increase the muscle, increase what, and you have to eat in order to build muscle. Cause think about it. You're asking your body to build actual cells Well, you can't do that at a huge calorie deficit. So you, you, your, your metabolism is, metabolism is not broken for good. <laughs> okay, good. Good, good, good. Um, 
Good. We would like to hear that. And so then my next question go and we're going to open it up. So start got, everybody start getting ready to, cause I mean, I could ask her questions for, you know, till five o'clock today, but the woman probably has to go pick up her kids. Um, in fact, do you need to get off? I mean, you're okay to the top of the hour, Tracy. Yes. Uh -huh. Okay. Perfect. So like, I am just finishing up the book, you know, I have like 25 books on habits, but like, here's the most recent one, atomic habits. Some of the gals in the room are reading this. You know, I mean, it's these, we've been alluding to this all the time, you know, it's uh, um, some, there's been certain things in my life and it's been like a, a giant moment of rock bottom, you know, with my drinking, it was a rock bottom moment. I didn't know that day was coming, but it was, it was hellish. And I drank a liter of tequila and I, I've never had a drink again. Um, it's a miracle. I didn't die. Right. right. Um, but there's some things in my life that have been way more like kind of a gradual habit change that was um, like, I, you know, I got off sugar-free gum last year. It was a big deal. I was chewing on, I had to chew on sticks for a while. I'm not kidding. It was chewing on wood, ch wood chunks <laughs> <laughs> because I was just so used to that habit, you know, yeah. um, because I, you know, I used to smoke and then I, you know, it's all these different things like where we're used to this motion. Um, so what would be, what are your thoughts on kind of um, habit change, like the dramatic one, or just, you know, daily, like little steps, daily steps. Yeah, I think for me, for the way I coach people is sustainable things that you can do. So it may be, and, and it definitely goes with a personality. So it kind of depends, but it might be that like, you're cutting out coats, like that's your first habit, mm -hmm. cutting out all right. soft drinks. Um, or it might be, you know, you're cutting out or, or you're just going to get more protein, you know, so, so picking right. habits and sticking to the daily, like what I, the kind of atomic habits, I, I've read so many self-help books lately that I don't remember which one said what, but like what I try to tell people is like going by the 80, 20 rule in everything. So the 80, 20 rule for food would be like that, the, the food thing that you were showing that 80% of the time you follow that. And then 20% of the time you plan not to follow that. Because if you go for a hundred percent, you're going to fail. And most of us, when we fail are like, well, forget it. I just had chips and hot sauce. I might have, might as well have three more margaritas, you know, whereas if you tell yourself, on Thursday, I'm going to Gloria's and I'm going to have some chips and hot sauce and a margarita. It is planned out. There's your 20%. Um, so, but with that 80, 20 thing, I also say, and I, I don't know if you'll agree with this, but I say 80% of the time you are focused on your daily habits. Like today, mm -hmm. I'm just doing this 20% of the time you're looking at your huge goal. So mm -hmm. whether that be in business or whether that be, I want to lose 30 pounds, 20% of the time you're looking and focusing on how great it's going to feel when you lose that 30 pounds. But 80% of the time you're thinking about what do I have to do today and celebrating your daily wins. You know, like, like when you have a day where I got enough water, I had my three square meals a day, all of the, I got my proteins, my carbs, my fats, and everything was non-process then you celebrate that and you count that as a win and you have to count those wins so that when you have a day that's not a win you can say i've got 10 wins under my belt why am i upset about one loss right you know? right and, you know and thinking about it you know however you have to think about it as you're still ahead of the game even if you came down here you're still ahead of the game where you started because I think that exactly. all or nothing, a hundred percent thing is what causes people to give up on their health and fitness. Exactly. Yeah. In the 12 step rooms, we call it a case of the efforts, <laughs> yeah. you know, yeah. it's like I ate one extra thing. And I, then I say, well, screw the whole thing. I'm going to go out right. and go on a big old binge. I don't need to do that. I don't, right. I don't need to do that. That's just self-sabotage. And I love that thought of, I'd never thought about it like that, but yeah, the 80, 20 with my business thinking, my, you know, my planning. And then, you know, it's like, we got to come back and then, you know, out and back. But yes. and most of the things are here. Most of it's right yes. here in today. I love that. That's a great concept. Um, and, you know, in, in OA, they teach, they taught me to have a temporary food plan. 
you know, my regular food plan is I know what it is. It's, it's yeah. paleo and it's this and that. But if I'm going to New York City, which I have done before, like I made a temporary plan that included some things I would not normally eat in Irving, Texas. Yes. And that that's normal. How, that's life. That's like how you actually can live a life that's like you're saying sustainable. Um, so Shelby has a great question here about, can you see that in the chat about the right exercise when you have lupus or fibromyalgia, um, you know, basically kind of, you know, how, what do you, you know, what are some suggestions for those that maybe have some physical situations that are going on? Well, I would say to start slow. And if it's just getting out and walking, it's just getting out and walking. Um, and then some really good things to use are the resistance tubing. You know, because you can get different resistance tubing where it's all different levels and you can get in a great resistance workout with those tubings to where it's easy on your joints and, um, you know, you, you kind of got to listen to your body and do, do, do the best that you can. And again, having the mindset of I did, okay, so I can't go out and do a bunch of squats. I can still walk. You know, and it's and getting away from that all or nothing mindset of that. I have to do all of this or nothing at all. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know? Yeah, that's really great. I when I two years ago or when was it? Three years ago, I had a herniated disc, and you guys get ready to start asking questions. Um, I had like all of a sudden. I mean, I've always had back pain, but it was like, oh, okay, I know my back hurts. Probably everybody's does, whatever. Yeah, but like it, it got so bad. I couldn't stand for more than five minutes. I couldn't sit, you know, I couldn't stand, couldn't sit, couldn't walk. We went to Kroger and I had to get a cart. Like I couldn't, I was dragging my leg and, you know, finally got MRI and all these things. And, you know, that, you know, I had to do some of those injections and thank God I didn't have to have surgery. But in the middle of all that, I had, I had already like started my routine. You know, I, I was going to the gym. I was fit. I was running. I was doing all these things, but I realized I could switch to elliptical because there was no yes. impact. And so I yeah. made that switch and I was, it actually relieved the pain. I mean, here's what we does, doesn't make sense to people that don't exercise. I have to exercise. It keeps my pain at bay. It, you know, yeah. it keeps things loose. You know, motion is lotion and, you know, do what you can. If you can do five minutes, if you can do 10, if you can do, you know, do what is right in front of you um, and just start. Yeah, the same thing with the food thing. Make sure you're, what you're choosing to do exercise-wise is sustainable. Like, mm -hmm. don't start, like when you haven't been doing anything, you don't say, I'm gonna work out six days a week. You say, <laughs> I'm gonna go for two. And then when two feels good and I've got it under my belt, I'm going for three. Right, right. Awesome. Awesome. So, uh, Tammy, did you have a question or a comment you, uh, off mute? Sorry, I didn't mean to unmute it, but I, I had the same question as Shelby. So that was mine. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. So let's go ahead and switch. I mean, anything else you want to share Tracy before I open it up for ahas or questions? Are you having fun? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Good. Here's the next oh. <laughs> oh, good, good. Uh, so who have anybody have a, a question or even just a, an aha or a takeaway? I mean, we, we love to hear me too. We all love to hear these things. We love to hear the moment of clarity that maybe you just got or an, a question that you might have for Tracy while she's here with us. Um, let's see. Yeah. Thank you. Marta says some, uh, yeah, I mean, Marta takes her dogs on a walk. She lives on the Oregon coast um, and it's gorgeous. Like she posts these awesome pictures in the forest and the water. And I'm like, oh my gosh, it's amazing over there. Uh, she talked about stretching. Yes. I, I used to think stretching was silly nonsense. Uh, I know better now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The older we get, the more we realize, oh, I should have been stretching this whole time. Mm -hmm. I get it. Mm -hmm. Who else? Anybody have a question or a takeaway? For uh, this is a great time to share anything that was um, uh, something that you needed to hear today. I'm going to start calling on you people because I know all of you. That's funny. <laughs> Shelby, go ahead. And then Robin. Well, Tammy, Tammy just unmuted. Go ahead, Tammy. I, 
I just wanted to say I love that whole mindset piece of it. And that's something that I teach because I've been on my own health journey for about five or six years. I started out at 243 pounds and I had two sisters that, that passed away before they were 50. So I am like huge on being healthy rather than just dieting. And uh, I've used different programs to to lose the weight. But I've also learned the importance of maintenance. And I mean, I still have some I would like to do. I mean, I, the strength, strengthening and that the muscle strengthening, I, I would love to work on that. But just that whole mindset, it starts right here in the mind and then flows out to everything else. So awesome. Thank you so much, Tammy. Uh, who else wants to jump in? question or an aha? Come on now, Shelby. This is going to sound crazy, but it had never occurred to me that I could start off with exercising just a couple of days a week, get used to that, and then add on because I think we're so conditioned from what we read in health magazines and all that kind of thing that you need to exercise every day or at least every other day and stuff and when you're 58 years old and you've got health problems jumping in every day is not always the smartest course right. of action so if, if that was an aha good. thank you oh good i'm glad good job yeah, thank you so it's funny how like i said if you if you take fitness and health and you relate it to how you did your business. Like you didn't just all of a sudden launch a business in one day, you know, it was, it was, it was small steps and it was learning along the way. So I feel like that's the same thing with health and fitness. It's like, it's learning along the way. And so like, one of the things I, I tell my clients is it's like, okay, there's different ways that you can make sure that you're eating the right foods. So maybe for one person, it might be, they want to plan out the whole week. And maybe for someone else, they just need two days ahead of time. Mm -hmm. And it's like, if, if doing the whole week just wears you out and you're like, I'm not in for that. Okay. Well then find what does work. Don't give up keep going until you find what works. Same thing with recipes. Okay. You don't like chicken, find a chicken recipe. You do like, you don't like fish. Okay. Well, let's find a lean ground beef recipe. You don't like, you know, so it's, it's kind of like, just keep looking for answers like you do with your business. Mm -hmm. You know, and I have to tell myself the opposite thing is like, okay, kind of like I did with fitness or yeah, fitness, I have to keep just looking for answers and keep being willing to try something else and not just throw up my hands and be like, well, that didn't work. I'm done, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, and last night I was reading an article about our body's natural weight versus a goal weight. And I was like, you know, I'm chasing a weight that my body doesn't want to go to. And, you know, I mean, there's no, why, why, you know, if I, if that, if to get to that weight means I can't eat strawberries or a, or a banana, then what is life about, right? Yeah, completely. A hundred percent. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, Robin, anything? Mel Ann, Marta, Christy? Ahas, questions? Okay, so one more thing I was thinking of that, that might help. Um, the other thing I, 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 like my most successful clients keep a journal. And they keep a journal as two things. One, to kind of plan. So like a journal, like I've created one, but you can create your own. I have one on my website, but you, yes. So in that, you, you can use it. I encourage, like if you're really ready to make a change, to encourage people to at least the day before. So today's Thursday. That Thursday, I would have written down what I'm going to eat on Friday. Okay, because if what I'm going to eat on Friday is not in my house, I have to go to the store because come Friday, oh, I was going to have, you know, fish. Well, if you don't have fish in your house, the plan's gone, you're hungry, what are you going to go for? So it's all in the planning. So using like writing, figuring out what you're going to eat the day before, however far you want to go, you know, you want to go one day, you want to go two day, you want to go three, whatever, and stick to it. And then 
like if you got it written down, let's say you're like, okay, well, I didn't eat fish, but I ended up having chicken. Okay, write down chicken. And then as you start feeling really good, you can see what you've been eating. Mm -hmm. If you start feeling really bad, you can look back and see what you ate. So if like you binge at night, well, the chances are you binged at night because you can look and see, oh, I didn't have enough food. You know, so it's kind of not right. only a way to hold yourself accountable, but it's also a way to learn because mm -hmm. you got to look at fitness as a journey and not an end result, but a, a journey of like, I'm going to keep learning and I'm going to keep getting better because let's face it, even if you got to your dream fitness or health goal, you can't stop. You got to, you're going to have to maintain it. Mm -hmm. So looking at it as a journey and not like, I just have this end goal of 50 pounds. Right, right, right. And I'm, I'm going to just uh, totally advocate. I mean, I, I created some little food plan, one pager that I could just tuck into my, yes. you know, I've used a variation of this for three or four years. I also use the app. I mean, I have to struggle. I, was, I struggle with obsessively, obsessively tracking. And, um, and so I have to watch for that as well. But the, I mean, when I lost weight a couple of years ago, it was just a simple little one, you know, one week at a glance, because I knew it, you know, it, it needed to be, you know, not just the day I wanted yes. to be able to see the week to know, okay, I'm going to go out to eat Thursday night. That's just yes. what we do. Yes. And plan for that. Yes. Plan for and that. it also goes back to when you could look back and say, I had a great week you don't beat yourself up because on Friday you had pie, you right. know, cause you can say I had a great week and why am I mad at myself for one little slip up when I've got all this under my belt. So it's right. also to celebrate your wins and focus yes, on that instead of your mistakes. Yes. Um, I also, I mean, I'm sure you do. I mean, you track probably, I mean, I write down, you know, my exercise, it makes me like, cause I, you know, I mean, right now I'm exercising every day, but I I've been doing that for a long time. And so, mm -hmm. but it also makes me happy to look, look, you know, just with my little pen, write down that I did the thing and be able to look because my mind always says, oh, you haven't done enough. Right. And, uh, and so I can look and go, what the hell girl, you're okay. Yes. Anyway, yep. I know we're at the top of the hour. Um, Tracy, thank you. Oh my gosh. Oh, oh my gosh. Thank you for the opportunity. I forgot to pray at the beginning. All of you guys, definitely please do this for me. You know, you're going to go join Tracy's free Facebook group so you can see all the things, right? And um, Tracy will post that. You know, we'll, we got that in here. Uh, some people probably already did that. Um, you know, go check out her stuff um, on her website, the app, all the things. There it is. Yes. Build your best body ever, easy to find. Also, I learned some cool things when I was first looking at Tracy stalking her. Up in her profile picture, she has, or up in her bi Facebook bio, she has that Facebook group link. And I, of course, instantly copied that and did it on mine. <laughs> um, but I'm just so grateful to know you. Can't wait to meet you in person, give you a big hug and um, have you tell me to eat more because that'll be really exciting yeah. for me. <laughs> um, let me yeah. say a quick prayer for all of us and get us out the door. All right. Father God, thank you so much for food, fuel for fuel and for the food that uh, we can use in our bodies and for fitness and for our mindset. Thank you for fellowship. Thank you for laughter about all of this because we can make it so tough. We can make our, we can make something that's so nourishing be so challenging. So Lord, help us to shift that, help us to embrace these things we've learned today and take one tiny action today. In Jesus name we pray. Amen. All right, guys, have a great day and I'll get this uh, uploaded to YouTube so other people can watch it as well. Have a good day. Thank you. Bye, Tracy. Talk to you later. Bye. Bye.